This is ECG in 60 seconds. 78-year-old man with a dual chamber pacemaker for sinus node dysfunction. He complains of palpitation and this is the resting ECG recorded. Take note of the dual chamber pacemaker device settings in the red box. Let's go through the ECG. It would first recognize that there is a regular rhythm of 100 beats per minute. Note that the maximal track rate is 130 beats per minute with a PMT rate of 110 beats per minute. Next, you will see that there is a P wave with a PR interval of less than 200 milliseconds. And we are able to determine that the atrial lead is sensing. A close look of the QRS would show that there is a pacing spike between or in front of every QRS indicating that ventricular lead is capturing. Now with the PR interval of about under 200 milliseconds, you could look at the inferior leads and draw a line to determine the onset of the P waves. You could do it in lead 2, 3 and even in AVF in the same manner and you would make an observation that the P waves are inverted. Let me then focus on the rhythm strip over this few PQRST complexes. If you look at it, we know that it starts with ventricular capture, uh, followed by inverted P wave to suggest nodal conduction in a retrograde manner. This is followed with a PR of about 200 milliseconds, under 200 milliseconds, corresponding to the uh, program parameters, followed by ventricular capture. And you could imagine the same cycle repeating itself. This is an endless loop tachycardia. This occurs in a patient with dual chamber pacemaker with intact VA conduction, especially when the VA interval is long. And there are ways to manage the retrograde conduction. You could adjust the refractory periods, the PVAPT and such. You could make the AV interval rate responsive, shortening the AV interval, or we could use a non-tracking mode, example a VVI or DDI to eliminate atrial tracking. This has been ECG in 60 seconds.